Imagine that you and I wanted to design a program that could listen to a recording of an instrument playing a chord and output what chord's being played and what instrument is playing it. The first thing we'd notice after we record the waveform and zoom in is that the signal repeats itself. Let's restrict our attention to just one of these repeating segments and call it a unit cell. If we can figure out what's going on in one unit cell, the information we learn will apply to all the others. It turns out there's a very powerful mathematical tool called the Fourier transform that can help us. This tool relies on the fact that a well-known set of repeating functions, the sine and cosine functions, can act as the ingredients, or basis functions, for a recipe to reconstruct any repeating function, and the Fourier transform provides us with that recipe. Now, if our signal was a perfect chord, made up of just three perfect notes, the Fourier transform would output the frequency of the three notes and the amplitude or loudness of each. This is the recipe we would need to reconstruct the chord. However, if we look at the waveform of a real chord, we see that the signal is far from perfect. In fact, these deviations from perfection are what differentiate the same notes being played on a trumpet versus a violin or a guitar. Let's call these imperfections in the signal the diffuse part of the signal. But the Fourier transform can give us the recipe for any repeating signal, no matter how messy. If we look at the recipe for a messy signal, we see that it includes a bunch of softer notes at many different frequencies that add together to give us the messy chord we started with. What's important to keep in mind is that the loudest notes in our recipe tell us general information about the chord being played. The diffuse part tells us more complex information we could use to identify the instrument. Now what does any of this have to do with my research? Well, it turns out that the way we identify the structure of proteins is very similar to the way we would identify chords and instruments with our program. If we want to know what a particular protein looks like, we first crystallize the protein. We stick copies of the protein together so they form a structure which repeats itself called a crystalline lattice. The repeating sets of proteins that make up the crystal are our unit cells. We then shoot x-rays to the crystal. Why do we do this? An astonishing fact is that the scattering of x-rays through protein crystals physically performs the Fourier transform. If we stick a detector on the other side of the crystal, we see intense bright spots known as Bragg peaks, which are the equivalent of the loudest notes from our sound wave program. The information from these Bragg peaks can be mapped back to tell us the positions of all the atoms in the protein. However, just like our messy chords, the x-ray image also contains diffuse information. The atoms in the crystal don't sit perfectly still, they move around. The diffuse intensity tells us information about the motions of the atoms in the protein and how those motions are correlated. One way to figure out how to get information out of the diffuse signal is to simulate the protein crystal and the process of shooting x-rays through it and see how well we can reproduce the signal we see in experiments. This is what my research focuses on. I build simulated copies of protein crystals and use powerful computers to make realistic movies of the jiggling of the atoms. I then feed this movie into a program that simulates the process of shooting x-rays through. The hope is that the information from the simulated x-ray images could help us to extract information from the images in real experiments. For instance, there may be ways to extract information about how proteins move, how mutations affect these motions, or how drugs bind to proteins. A better understanding of the diffuse signal could help us to understand the protein motions that cause diseases or design better drugs to combat them.